Hey guys, hello and welcome back to my channel. This is Shite JK, the Rustic Wanderer. In today's video, as is evident from this view, um, I'll be talking about what's in my backpack that I bring along with me while I'm traveling around the world. So let's get started. So typically when I'm traveling around the world um, and I'm picking my destination, I don't normally do intensive research about the place to already have a sense and feel of what to expect because um, I like to leave things uncertain and that gives me the kind of pleasure of exploring and learning things while I'm there in the environment rather than knowing everything ahead of time. So essentially while I'm packing, what I'm thinking in my head is to keep the backpack as light as possible and also be prepared for a few different kinds of situations. Typically, I prepare for the possibility of uh, being able to swim in case if the season is nice and if I land up next to some water body there. Uh, mostly open water swimming, not indoors in a swimming pool because that I can do it while I'm at home as well. So no point doing it while I'm away in another country. Um, I also prepare for trekking just in case if I land up uh, near some mountains. Big or small doesn't matter as long as it's some sort of trekking trip or Sometimes there are even small trails in a park that take you up a small uh, hill. That's also better than nothing, some sort of exercise. I did a couple of those while I was in Athens, um, right behind a conference center. There was a small park with a small trekking trail that takes you up uh, through the nature, nice waterfalls and uh, well laid out steps. Um, and there were nice views up at the top. So I stayed prepared for those kind of things. Uh, also for camping out in the, in the forest, Normally, it is reasonably easy to find a pair of trees that you can use as your uh, hammock mounting poles and you just set up your hammock, chill for a bit. Uh, as long as you don't destroy the nature and you respect the nature, uh, keep it nice and clean. I don't suppose anybody should have a problem when you're setting up a hammock. Um, other than that, I also prepare for some impromptu sports sessions. So since I do a lot of sports, Sometimes I end up uh, requesting some people to let me play with them for a while. So sometimes I requested them to let me play volleyball, sometimes basketball, um, sometimes just random rock climbing, even if I don't have the proper shoes, but just like a mini couple of minute session so that I can learn from them because I also tried my hands at bouldering. So let's see what I have in my backpack. The items that I'm going to describe are in no particular order and this is not an exhaustive list. These are just the essentials that I have in my backpack. Other than these, of course, there are the clothes that you use for daily use, um, your undergarments, your toiletries and other such accessories which I'm not going to talk about because I presume they are obviously you already know about them. So let's see, let's, let's start off with this um, towel that I have in front of me. It's uh, from the Catalon, from a brand Nabaiji, and it's a microfiber towel. Um, it's, a, it's the biggest size that you have in the Catalon, um, and the reason why I really like this one is because microfiber um, dries up really fast. It does feel a bit awkward when you're wiping your face for the first time with this towel, because you're, if you're used to the, the fibers of a regular towel, then this would feel like it's, it's missing all the fiber, as if uh, you've used the towel for like, several decades in the top has worn out but that's not the case you just have to get used to it um, it dries up really fast it's really big so you can easily wrap around yourself and move between the washroom and your uh, room in case if they are separated and so on for example in a hostel that might be the case so you can easily wrap around yourself you can even use it as a beach towel um, so wrap around yourself after you come out uh, from the sea or you could just lay it on the sand to lay on top of that so that the sand doesn't get stuck on you um, and since it dries really fast you can easily put it in your backpack even if you take a shower just a couple of hours before you're actually traveling somewhere so that's that's really convenient next up of course uh, essentials is a uh, world travel adapter so I use this twist and slide uh, world travel adapter which works for about 100 to 150 countries around the world so on the top you have um, you could plug in a UK plug with uh, thick flat pins a US plug um, Australian plug with the, the very thin ones that are at an angle 
Um, what it does is it's uh, you rotate it from the top like this and on, on the ring light blue ring here it says the country so European Union, UK, US, Australia um, and then you, depending on the country you select so this gets locked and then you press this button and pull it down and there you have the plug point to put it in the socket in the wall it has a pretty sturdy grip when you have mounted it in the wall as well um, and in fact up until the point where I did not have a tripod to make the vlogs I was actually using this um, as my makeshift tripod uh, I used to put my phone in the middle between the plug point here uh, so it has multiple uses also since I have been living abroad for several years now I have ended up buying uh, electronics from overseas uh, wherever I was based at the time so every time I go back to India there is always this problem of the plugs not fitting properly so this comes in really handy and it has been with me for quite a while a, a bit heavy but then it covers 150 countries all in one go so uh, well, there's always that trade-off so that was that um, next up is this flashlight slash camping light so it's the Trek 900 by Decathlon 4 Plus um, the thing I really like about that is that it just has a 2 hour charging time to fully charge the battery from 0 to full um, it even has a lock button so in case if you're putting it in your backpack it doesn't turn on by mistake um, and it has a, a 10 second booster in case if you want like a blinking light so or, or just like mild light you can charge it like do a quick charging for a couple of minutes or even a couple of seconds as it says it's here it's a 10 second boost and use it um, again uh, it's ipx7 rated so that means you could use it for um, light rainfall um, it's uh, pretty sturdy so i guess if you drop it it will still be intact hopefully weighs just about 99 grams which was the best part because it's uh, i don't want this battery to be this this flashlight to be very heavy and expensive it was pretty economical as well from decathlon um, it has multiple ranges at which it works so it could go anywhere between four meters to up to a hundred meters and depending on uh, different intensity so it, it starts off with a red light like this then a medium white light brighter brighter and brightest and even yeah so depending on which mode you're operating in it has a variable battery life so it can go anywhere between a um, couple of hours to uh, even up to let's say 70 hours or so um, so that was the best part that i really liked about this also it comes with a rechargeable battery so you could just detach it from here and also comes with a battery pack in the sense that there is uh, a plug point that you can attach to the battery and there are three cells that you could put in the AAA battery so in case if your rechargeable battery runs out that's like a, another makeshift battery and it comes with a USB plug in a bag like this so that's the flashlight um, it has multi-purpose uses so for example sometimes I like to go on a mountain and, and stay there to enjoy the sunset and normally when the sun sets it gets really dark faster in the mountain before it gets darker in the city um, so this helps me get down the mountain to the city and it stays with me for quite a while it's, it's much easier than using the phone's flashlight because while I'm taking the pictures of the sunset uh, sometimes the phone's battery starts draining um, and I don't have enough to run around with the flashlight also, if you like vlogging like me, and if you're just a beginner, so you don't want to invest too much in all those ring lights and stuff, uh, you could use this as an ambient light in the background. So it helps with the vlogging setup as well. So I was using this as a hack um, besides my makeshift tripod before. Um, next up, I'd like to talk about this uh, hammock also from the Catalon. So if you find any pair of trees that are about uh, two to three meters apart. This hammock is a single person hammock that I found on a sale. I guess it was about 10 to 15 euros at the time. Um, and I grabbed it even without thinking because hammocks, who doesn't like swinging in a hammock? So this is like, uh, um, although it says um, max 110 kilos, but I guess it's a single person hammock. So most of the people should be easily fitting inside. Comes with a two year warranty, has a pretty strong material. 
Um, I've been using it for several years now, haven't had any problems. Comes with uh, two nylon ropes that you can use to tie your uh, hammock around the poles. Um, although I found that those nylon ropes were not very sturdy when you're kind of trying to hang your hammock and, and when you sit down at least once I used to fall down. Um, so I got really fed up with those kind of things. So I bought myself an extension for that from Overmont, which is this one. Um, what's inside is you have those tree straps from Overmont and these are really long so you can open up these tree, tree straps, hug them around the tree, tie them there um, and it has inbuilt loops so if you get, you also get uh, hooks to kind of mount your hammock onto this um, so now it's like a quick mount system that I set up so it takes less than a few minutes for me to set up my hammock, everything is ready to go um, and more or less the same to pack it up. So that's my hammock setup, basic. Also as an extension for my hammock, I recently bought this uh, mosquito net, also from Decathlon. Um, although it was meant for a solo neck uh, hammock that comes with, from Decathlon, but I've used it with my hammock as well and it's pretty standard size so it should work with more or less all hammocks. Um, comes with uh, ropes inside as well so you could tie it between the trees above your hammock um, and, and put your hammock through the net and easily use it. Uh, pretty good quality, pretty lightweight so you can have it as an attachment in case of you're traveling in the summer and planning to stay out in the night and you think there will be mosquitoes or even in the daytime if mosquitoes are not your friends um, then you can use this. Another extension to my camping setup is this recent uh, tarp that I bought from Decathlon. Comes in a packaging somewhat like this. Um, gets a bit heavy about two, two and a half kilos because of the metal poles inside but if you remove the poles it's, uh, it drops about a kilo of its uh, weight. So the tarp inside is like uh, has a lot of uh, configurations. Um, it comes with a five-year warranty, which was the best one that I bought it from Decathlon. And the tarp is uh, pretty big, I would say. So you could either use it just as a, your makeshift camping setup. So if you kind of make it as a shade and, and do the camping underneath, or you could make it as your rain cover for your tarp, or you could even set it up as a configuration as a makeshift tent while if you can sleep on the ground. Um, so it has a lot of uses. Uh, it comes with the, the pegs to, to bolster it in the ground and extendable metal poles, two of those. So sometimes I just leave the metal poles behind and I just bring the pegs with me um, and that has served the purpose quite often. So um, yeah, that's another extension that I have to my camping setup now. Pack it up and then on the top it has a handle so you can just, just put it in the side of your backpack and then that's uh, easy peasy. Another thing that I have in terms of clothing, so let's look at the few basic clothing that I have, is this um, sort of sports leggings or sports pajamas, whatever you want to call them. Um, these are from New Balance and uh, the New Balance Heat range. And the good thing about this is uh, these are skin fit, so there is an extra room for air, um, which means it traps the heat and that's pretty good for me for the winters, for example. Um, I could use it for doing sports, for example, if I want to go out for running and the weather outside is cold, or I could even use it as a base layer. So because it's very thin and it doesn't take up much space, even if your pants are like fitting size, um, it's, it doesn't uh, disturb that setup and you can easily wear it underneath. Then the other pair of clothes that I have is this um, camping pant from Decathlon for class as well. Um, it has multiple pockets, so that's the thing I really like about it. Um, it is pretty kind of flexible material, good quality. It's thin material despite all of these pockets, so it's, it's pretty good for the summer. And the best part is there is a zipper here so you could uh, remove the lower half and it suddenly becomes a short um, so you could use it as short come pants. Um, I, I used this feature when I was uh, exploring Singapore because it went up to I think 35 to 40 degrees one day and it was really hard to be wearing pants but I left from Finland so it was cold here so 
this is best for the setting if you're going out from a cold place into a hot place or vice versa so you can set it up accordingly um, and you can do it on the go like I still remember I was walking on the streets in Singapore I found a small park went inside removed the lower house put that in my bag and I was on the go again just a couple of minutes um, one thing to remember though is that the zippers in the lowers are identical on both sides so when you're putting it back on sometimes it get confusing which leg goes where um, but it takes a while to get used to right let's see what do we have okay so in terms of clothes the other two things that I want to talk about are these two guys so every time i go out like i said I, I prepare for multiple situations and one of those situations is being able to play some sports in case if i found uh, a basketball court where some people are playing or some volleyball court outdoors especially by the beach side so i always bring a pair of synthetic trousers with me because the good thing about synthetic trousers is that they double as uh, swimming costumes swimming trunks for guys so you could even go and swim in them um, and while they are drying if you want you can find yourself a volleyball court and start playing there or a basketball court or I don't know just just do any sport that you want to do uh, without having to worry to keep changing back and forth back and forth and if the color is dark nobody would really notice if it's uh, dry or wet um, so that's uh, pretty convenient um, also for hot weather conditions you could use it as like a pair of uh, daily clothes um, although I do have like few basic regular t-shirts, I don't want to cover too much about them but the only special t-shirt that I have is this uh, from ProTouch. Uh, it's a full sleeve t-shirt. It has a hole here in the sleeve so you could put your thumb inside so it stays in place. Uh, the good thing about this is uh, it's, it's breathable yet it keeps you warm. So it is uh, this Dry Plus Eco Series. So it helps you sweat out while retaining your heat inside. So that's, uh, I have found pretty good when you're trying to go hiking um, in the cold conditions. Because if, if you put on too many layers, then you have to keep stopping and, and removing the layers and putting them back on when you start feeling cold again. But um, clothes like these help you to stay, kind of expire your sweat while retaining your heat. So it, it, it uh, helps a lot not having to stop every once in a while. And another pair of pants that I really like is this one also from Kesha and these are very good for the winters because they have a fleece lining inside uh, also at the base they have these um, straps to tie them around the shoes so you can uh, fit them snug tight um, and the fleece lining really keeps you warm I've worn it in, in Finland until like minus 30 minus 15 kind of temperatures and I didn't feel a thing there was no need for another base layer to be worn um, underneath and I was pretty comfortable without having to think twice about anything else. Um, in terms of shoes, I normally use one of these two shoes depending on where I'm going and what the weather conditions I'm expecting. So if the weather is going to be nice and warm or let's say up until rainy, double digit temperatures, then I prefer these shoes. Um, I got this uh, from Finland. These are Gore-Tex rated, water resistant, um, pretty sturdy shoes with a really nice grip. Um, they've been with me for more than two to three years now. And I also use them to go to work because it's a pretty decent color. So you can pair them up with your um, daily clothes. So you can use it for your daily commute. Um, doesn't create any nuisance so much while you're passing through flight security, oftentimes it doesn't beep so it should be okay they are medium height um, and uh, if you kind of keep the shoelaces loose enough then you have enough uh, air circulation inside so you don't start sweating your, your legs your feet don't start sweating and um, that's a good thing and I have done like uh, trekking hiking uh, lots of walking around in these kind of shoes and I stay really comfortable in them um, so that's that's one pair of shoes that I have um, the other one are these high uh, combat boots uh, from Bates, Bates US. They are American military brand. Um, I think the US military also uses it. They are also Gore-Tex rated. Um, I have used them for extremely cold conditions. Um, they, especially when there is snow or water puddles and stuff, I don't even have to think twice before I'm going somewhere. 
um, and uh, they keep my feet really really warm so especially when it's uh, freezing cold outside um, I, I prefer using them and they both of them have really nice grip at the bottom so you could use it for any sort of extreme outdoor conditions uh, where you want to go mm, continuing further um, along the lines of being prepared for various different conditions uh, I also remember to stay hydrated wherever I'm going so I normally carry two kinds of water sources. One is uh, typically a bottle like this. Um, I try to avoid having to buy plastic water bottles from outside. So I bring my own bottle. Normally if you're staying in a hostel or any other form of accommodation, of course you can go and uh, refill yourself uh, before you're leaving. And as a reserve, I always keep like this kind of a bottle, which is, uh, it, it shrinks as you keep drinking your water. So this kind of uh, water bladder is, is pretty useful because the weight reduces as you keep drinking. So at the end of the day, by the time you're coming back home, um, it's kind of weightless uh, when all the water is used. Um, even comes with like a, a hook, so you can hang it on the side of your backpack or sometimes I even hang it on my hammock, uh, so I have easy access to water. Um, then this is a souvenir I got for myself from Finland. Um, it's called Huxa in Finnish or it's, it's essentially a, a wooden cup made out of birch tree because birch tree is very kind of uh, commonplace here in Finland. Most of the furniture and most of the, the common use wood is from birch tree. Um, this helps me kind of hydrate myself, be it water, be it juice or any sort of salt drink that I bring with me on the, on the trekking trips or outdoor trips. Uh, especially in hot conditions, so I don't have to buy plastic cups or any other form of cups to be able to drink water or drink juices that I have with me. And usually for snacks and food, I try to go for what I find locally around me, but I do remember carrying some sort of protein bars to snack on uh, with me and some nuts, uh, usually non-sorted nuts. I don't like sorted nuts because they tend to make me really thirsty. Um, so I go for non-sorted nuts to keep me kind of full. Uh, so I'm not eating junk all the time and I try to bring some fibrous uh, foods with some water content such as uh, oranges, um, apples, bananas. These are very easy to find almost everywhere you go and you go to any convenience store you should be able to find them. Um, then I kind of get some snacks like sandwiches or whatever is available around that's like a to-go kind of snack. Uh, keeping in mind that I might be outside for the entire day, the temperatures might get hot, so things don't spoil. Last but not the least, the very important thing is the backpack in which everything is put together. So this again is the Kesho Fortla's 70 Easy Fit. Um, it's uh, also from Decathlon. Uh, most of my Decathlon stuff I have gathered from Decathlon from around the world. Uh, but I really love this backpack. The reason being it has like a dual zipper so you can open it from the top or at the bottom. So it helps you pack your stuff easily. Um, also has a compartment here with elastic. So you could put your laptop or some essentials inside that you want easy access to or to stay secure. Has pockets on the side, pocket at the bottom. Um, has straps at the back that you can adjust easily to fit your back so there is like multiple straps for you to adjust also there is like a padding that tra uh, confirms to your back your backbone so it stays really snug and comfortable so I have carried about 20-23 kilos on my backpack with this and um, on my back and then I didn't feel a thing I have stayed out for uh, a day long hike or even longer and, and this was pretty convenient um, so you can adjust the, the height and where it places on your bag very easily. Um, also comes with a rain cover. Um, I think that's reflective in nature, so it's pretty convenient. Um, I've only ever had to use the rain cover once, maybe for a couple of minutes. Um, also has this uh, small pouch here at the waist pack. So if you want some essentials to go in there, you could put them there. So that's uh, most of my stuff gets packed in there. Right, so that was it. That was uh, the essentials that I carry around with me while I'm uh, trekking, hiking, backpacking and exploring the world. So now you know. Uh, do comment down below if you want to uh, tell me more about what are your trekking and packing essentials. Most of the products that I've explained in this video, they'll be linked down below so you can check them out if you want to. Uh, buy them if you wish to go for them. Um, be sure to like, share and subscribe this video. 
um, or my channel and uh, share this video with uh, your friends who like traveling as well so that uh, we can learn from each other um, as a community. All right, uh, wish you all a happy new year 2021. I hope this new year is off to a good start for all of you um, and look forward to being able to travel again sometime soon this year. So hopefully see you around at some point in some part of the world. Take care, this is Rustic Wanderer signing off. Thank <laughs> you.